So far, we have seen how the Indus Valley or the Harappan civilization was discovered right here on our own Indian subcontinent, right? This was discovered around 4,500 years ago, 2,500 BCE is when it began and it declined around 1,500 BCE. This was right here in our own Indian subcontinent on the northwestern part of India. So now let's find out more about it. So there were people living in these cities, right? Well, take a look at this picture, which has been taken from an actual site, which has been excavated from that civilization. Just imagine people bustling around here. So let's learn more about town planning. Let's go on a virtual tour now. So let's see how the houses in the civilization were built. Firstly, there were these citadels, which were fortified for protection, right? And in these citadels, there were other important buildings, such as the granaries and also the great bath. Now we're going to look at the granaries. This is the granary and this is the great bath. Apart from that, there were also several important administrative buildings that were built on the citadel. Now this is the lower part of town, which had planned, well-planned single-storied or multi-storied building. So let's learn more about this now. Firstly, this was the best planned urban civilization in the world. It is even said that it was even better planned than some Indian cities today, which was there during the Bronze Age. This is called the Bronze Age because the metal bronze was discovered during this time. So now, the cities were divided into two sections, the citadel and the lower town. So usually the west part of the city was smaller but higher. And on these, the citadels were built. So the citadels were built on higher platforms, right? This was done so that during floods, the people of the lower town could go there and protect themselves, right? So on the west side was the citadel. Meanwhile, on the east side were the lower towns. So these lower towns were now divided into rectangular or square blocks by streets. And then each street or each block was further subdivided into smaller lanes. So we can see exactly how well planned these cities used to be. Now let's take a look at the citadel. Firstly, let's take a look at this picture right here, which is another picture that has been taken from one of the excavated sites. In this picture, you can even see the citadel right here. And you can see how it is on a raised platform. So why was it raised? Well, it was raised so that people could go there and protect themselves during floods. So the people from the lower town or anywhere else could go to the citadel area and be safe from the flood waters, right? And the, it is said that maybe the constructions of the special buildings in the citadel were planned by the rulers. So far, we have seen that on the citadel, the most important buildings were made, right? So another important thing was this Great Bath, which has been found in Mohenjo-Daro. The Great Bath was a part of the large citadel complex found here in Mohenjo-Daro, right? What were his measurements? Well, firstly, it was a pool. So just imagine a pool 4,500 years ago. So how big was it? Well, it was 39 feet long and 28 feet wide. And so how deep was it? Well, it was 8 feet deep, right? And so this pool was made in such a way that water would not seep through, right? How was it built? Well, take a look at these bricks here, right? Well, they are specially made burnt bricks, which were used with gypsum, mortar and bitumen so that the water cannot seep through these pools. Apart from that, what is so great about this bath? Well, it had staircases like this one, which you can see here, right? And so people could descend using these staircases. There were also changing rooms all around the bath, right? And so how did people bring water into this pool? Well, the people did not have to do much as there were pipes attached. Pipes were attached to wells, which would bring in fresh, clean water 
and there were also drainage pipes. So these drainage pipes would take away the waste and the dirty water away from the pool. And these pools were mostly used for ritual purpose. So this particular construction shows us the engineering skills that were possessed by these people in the Harappan civilization. You'd also be fascinated to know that this was one of the earliest public water tank in the entire world. Another important part of the citadel complex were the granaries. In fact, as many as six granaries have been found in Harappa and the largest building there in Mohenjo-daro was its granary. So why were granaries given so much importance? Well, this was because no one can live without food, right? And these granaries were there to thresh and store grains. There were even ventilation methods so that these grains could stay fresh. And during times of emergency, these granaries were used because they had grains in them, right? So during any emergency like any flooding or earthquake or in case of a drought, the people in the civilization could always rely on the granaries, right? So this is why the granaries were so important in this civilization. There were also such town halls which served as a variety of different purposes, right? So they were multi-purpose. They were used as an assembly hall, a prayer hall and a place to hold cultural events. It is even said that maybe the rulers used these assembly halls for different administrative purposes. Now let's take a look at the lower town. This is where the people like you and me lived. So the lower town was divided into rectangular blocks with street cutting each other at right angles. The buildings here had wooden doors and windows which you can see in the video and the houses and shops were constructed on both sides of the road which you can see right here. Apart from that the houses were either single or multi-storied, right? So we can understand that even from movies such as this Mohenjo-daro we can learn so many different facts about history. Now let's take a look at the Harappan houses. Well, most of these houses were planned beforehand, right? And these were made of burnt bricks. These were made of burnt bricks. These were built on a higher platform so that they can escape the different problems that they could have faced because of floodings, right? So these houses were usually single story or multi storied depending on how rich you were. So if you were a richer merchant, you would have a double storied house, right? So now the houses were built around an open courtyard, which you can see here, right? This is the open courtyard and the entire house is built around this open courtyard. And the kitchens were usually on one side of the courtyard. They, these houses had well-sized rooms, bathrooms and solid staircases as well as water wells. So the houses had wells inside, right? And these also had windows and doors which were made out of wood. So this actually tells us how well planned even the houses were from within. These houses also had a drainage system. So now let's check out their drainage system. Now can you imagine these people 4500 years ago had covered drains? Well these covered drains ran along the main streets which you can see here. So this might be one of the main or the larger drains right. So these were attached to drains from within the houses and these houses had sloped floors in their kitchens and in their bathrooms so that the waste water can easily reach the main drains which were there along the streets right. These drains also had manholes which we even have today for inspection and cleaning at regular intervals. So from that we can actually understand how much importance was given to cleanliness even back then. Another important city was the city of Dholavira, which was there on the run of Kutch, located on Khadir Bait. This can also be known as Khadir Bait. So let's find out more about the city. So there was fresh water, fertile soil and an open area for public ceremonies in this city. Why was this city so important? Well, you see, unlike the other cities of uh, the Harappan civilization, 
in which the cities were divided into two parts, Dholavira was divided into three parts. And each part was surrounded with massive stone walls with entrances through gateways. So this city must be really important if it was this well protected, right? After this, another important discovery was also made in this city, which was what? Large letters of the Harappan script that were carved out of white stone, which you can even see here on this image. And this is called the Dholavira signboard. Why is this so important? Well, you see, before this, the Harappan script has only been found in smaller objects and small sculptures. So this was, in fact, a very big deal and a very important discovery for the city. The cities also had fire altars, right? So this fire altar, which you can see here, has been found in Kalibangan and this one has been found in Lothal. Even today, fire is used in different ceremonies, right? So we can say that this dates back to the Harappan times and in these sacrifices may have been performed during that day and age. So from all of that, we can understand just how well planned the cities were. In fact, some people say that they were better planned than some Indian cities today. So that definitely speaks volumes, right? Now these houses or all the buildings, even the citadels were built using burnt bricks which were laid in an interlocking way because of which these, some of these buildings have survived the ravages of time. And we get to learn and see many different things or many different aspects of the Harappan civilization because of these buildings. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free on deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app and get easy access to more than 5,000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and get a chance to win amazing prizes like Playstations and iPads. So, at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So, register for free now.